All right, so what we're going to go over now is the thing that everyone's probably saw already. Kyle Kalinske versus Jimmy Dore. Versus Jimmy Dore. God, God, man, Jesus incarnated Jimmy Dore, apparently, according to fans. <laughs> and Kyle's going to respond to all the shit I did in that video yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And uh, since uh, since most of you have probably seen this already, I guess you'll be getting my take. You may or may not like this. Here we go. So this segment is being recorded uh, pretty late at night. I actually didn't have the time to prep a normal show for you all. I was going to prep a normal show for you all. But then a, a giant wrench got thrown into those plans because... My whole chat is wrenches right now, just so you know. Pause. Um, there was a little bit of Twitter drama that unfolded. There were some passive-aggressive shots that were taken at me. I didn't take kindly to that. Um, and so now I feel like my hand is being forced and I have to weigh in on an issue that I don't want to weigh in on. Um... So I'm a little cranky. I'm a little tired. I don't really want to be doing this segment, but now I feel like I have to do this segment. Well, we're going to find out why that... I, I feel... Oh, it's kind of necessary for you to make statements on it. In fact, it shouldn't take someone insulting you or you feeling like you've been slighted by someone in order to respond, right? This should have already happened. Same goes for Jimmy Dore. Like I said in the other video, it's like you're like the f Jank Uger was your fucking rat that ran over the that pushed your button to get you to actually start saying shit about the creepy shit this company has done. Oh, Kyle needed Jimmy to push his button to get him to fucking say something. And guess what? All this content we're hearing from all these sides. Guess what? It's all dark, kind of, kind of dark, kind of creepy shit. It's like, hey, Jimmy, so you knew about all these crimes happening here? Not crimes like legal crimes, even though some of them might be, but straight up like human crimes where it's like, what a fucking douchebag for doing that. Are you corrupt when you're doing that? Are you this or that? Are you working for someone when you do this? Like all those type of crimes? Like that's been happening at TYT and... You, just now getting upset about it or just now calling it out. And then for Kyle, same thing. He's, he's still a part of their network. It's like mealy-mouthed man of the times. You've heard his explanation of morality. My God, is that terrible. <laughs> so it's like, like, please... Go get a penthouse, Kyle. I beg you to just just buy a penthouse and hide up there. Don't let... I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not saying I'm special or anything, because a lot of people can do this with Kyle. But like, don't let someone like me get anywhere near you, bro. Just stay away. Get a penthouse and just leave you too, bro. Just being real with you. All right, here we go. Uh, because of the timing of all this, it has Don't leave YouTube, up the but potential for a normal show tomorrow, which is a be blatantly shame honest. But be blatantly honest that you don't know shit. Hop in my car and as far as morality and goes, I don't have enough time. Which is the whole point of politics and get all that stuff taken care of. But anyway, enough on the backstory and the current situation. Let's dive into it. So obviously, I'm going to talk here about the drama between Jimmy Dore and Aaron Mate versus the Young Turks. So I just want to reiterate. Welcome to the wrench crew. To Totes my votes. I don't want to talk about it. I've bent over backwards wrench guy. to stay out of this fight. Now, some of you might not like that. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> some of you might not like that I stayed out of this thing. And I don't care. <laughs> like, I said this in the video, I'm like, is he going to try to play the cool guy who's, who's on both He's on both teams, really? You know, they're all nice people, you know? Why can't we all just get along? You know? Even though it's clearly, like, shit that leads to dead bodies. Like, at least one side of this argument has, like, these guys were doing that, right? They are doing it. This is weird, right? It's like, 
does the word cowardly come to mind? If your best friend raped three women, are you going to let it fucking go? Because it's your friend? I, well, I knew him since fifth grade. He can't be, you know, I, I, I don't want to you know, embarrass him or anything. But what about the victims that are going to happen that could keep happening? You're going to let that shit go? And trust me, when I say rape, the shit that TYT does, I'm sorry, it's just as bad. Just as dangerous. Selling war is fucking dangerous. Super duper dangerous and super duper creepy. So when you tell your fucking audience, I don't care. I was gonna stay I was gonna be the bigger man and stay out of it and let the war crimes happen. You're not the bigger man no. You're the small smaller cowardly, like I'm afraid to call my friends out because uh they're my friends. I don't want to hurt their feelings, even though they're selling war, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, that's Jimmy. Whatever months ago. Holy shit. Like, they all suck. Will the fans get it? Uh, 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 who knows? Who knows if they catch up to this shit? Like, hey, Jimmy did the same thing. Or he kept his fucking mouth shut for years with all, with all the shit TYT was doing. I'm sure he has an excuse for it, guys. I'm sure he does. Let's continue. I'll never hide a single thing from any of you when it comes to policy. But when it comes to personal shit, I don't want to get involved in it. And I want to stay out of it. And that's always how I've been. That's always how I will be. I'm an introvert. I hate drama. This is some fucking drama shit. Okay. I'm an actual introvert. Believe it or not, I truly am. I know what that means. I, yeah, maybe he is too. I, I don't know. Uh, but once again, war crimes leads to shit tons of people dying. Should not lead to you saying drama. Drama. Even the Anna versus Jimmy sexual harassment, whatever thing, the blackmail, whatever, whatever. Uh, angle you're looking at it from it's still like that's still not just drama right that's kind of darker than just gossipy no we're just talking shit about each other so yeah one was accused of sexual harassment and one is basically doing lawyer shit to uh clear his name which comes off as dishonorable and he also let the war crimes go until re till he got insulted right if jank never pushed his button maybe he would have never said anything and they would have continued on selling the Syrian war and all these other fucking things. And Russiagate and all that shit. Boy, this is fucking easy. Let's continue. I got, I'm a minute and 50 seconds in. Let's keep going. And I want nothing to do with it. So, um... You're probably scared, The bro. reasons why I want nothing to do with this, number one, it's obvious. Jimmy, Jenk, and Anna are all personal friends of mine. Um... You see how he's... I'm sorry, but it's a little weird when he's making these statements as if it, this is the rational thing to do. That freaks my head out. That, that freaks me out, bro. Let's continue. So it puts me in a really weird place. Now, you can pretend like that's not a good reason, but you all know it's a good reason, and you all know if you were in my shoes, you'd feel the exact same way. But the second okay. reason is probably you all You can pretend um, so it puts me in a really weird place. Now, you okay. can pretend like that's not a good reason, but you all know it's a good reason, and you all know if you were in my shoes, you'd feel the exact same way. But I oh, know it's okay to feel awkward and shit. That's an awkward thing to do and tell your friend about something bad they've done. For, for sure, that's awkward. You want to be happy and friendly with your friend. In fact, you might get like really angry that, like, why'd you put me in this position where I got to do this? What the fuck? But as far as not saying anything, that's. A lot less under for someone who claims to be the rational. I'm gonna try to do good, guy. And I'm gonna try to do good. Like there's no excuse for you, bro. That's why you're on the table right now. Here we go. But the second reason is probably the more important reason, which is it's ugly and it's personal, which is all the more reason for me to stay out of this. And by the way, I should also add, no. speaking on behalf on behalf of. Um, Crystal as well here, because she also has desperately wanted to try to stay out of this, um, but... Cowards. Clearly, I can't. She's the reason why I'm calling them cowards 
is because there's clearly like there's moral things on the table here. This is not just you know name calling back and forth. I like, know there's actual like shit that you would never let Rachel Maddow get away with. Like your friends are doing. Holy shit! Is he blind to that or it's weird? He's somehow managed to still not have to really dive into it at least as much as I'm about to right now. All Should right, I speed so, him up? Um, I should probably speed him up, right? We're going to break this down. Everybody understand. And please, for the love of God, listen to every word that I'm going to say here. Don't listen to parts of it and then get triggered and then shut it off and fucking freak out or whatever. He's not on my team. He, and he fucking tweeted him. I'm not going to read your shit. Everybody calm the fuck down. You don't, you don't normally re read your... Ah, whatever. I don't think he does. There are two it? separate conversations we're going to have here. There are policy conversations and I don't see any responses here. It's weird. Personal conversations. Whatever. Two separate ones. It's not all the same. It's not all the same. There's policy stuff and there's personal stuff. Saying that up front. Policy. You mean so morals, I'm only right? I'm weighing in here because I've been dragged in. I have to give you my take now on every little aspect of this. <laughs> and so that's what we have to do. Let's bring the timeline back. It is It wasn't always Wednesday. like this between Jimmy and TYT. You don't believe me? Take a look. Lo and behold, the Young Turks opened up their door to me and I walked in. And uh, we've been working together ever since. And I remember Steve-O was there and I met Anna that first time and JR. And uh, it was, you know, I was so, you know, it was such a fun place to be. And so I was real thrilled and flattered that they invited me to be part of their group. And uh, th one of the funnest times of my life was the Bernie Sanders campaign. And uh, so I just want to thank Jenk Uger and everybody at TYT for including me. I've been blessed with good people in, in my career. And, uh, you know, I was, it was a real stroke of luck that I was able to work with the Young Turks uh, and Jenk Uger. So uh, good luck to them going forward. And again, I hope we can come together. Pause. And, uh, Pause. And work on You want to come together? Pause. All right, so Jimmy Dore uh, has... Uh, all right. By the way, all those crimes that Jimmy... That he now rants about over and over and over again were all happening while he was there. Let's continue. Other than, like, uh, I guess the Syria stuff. Right, the force of vote stuff. But he was... I think he was there during Russiagate. I think. But uh, the... More hefty, in my opinion, seemingly more hefty crimes like the the Katzenberg, whatever, blah blah blah, the uh, Libyan war, Syrian war. <laughs> what was it the Clinton shit? Get Clinton in office because Trump is so bad. All happening while Jimmy was there. Granted, Jimmy gave pu Jimmy will give pushback, but he didn't call them bad guys until they insulted him. As soon as they insulted him, then he's like, "Oh wait, you're a bad guy." <laughs> Exited the building, and I think that a lot of you probably have seen no his video talking about that. And uh, and he's up, Jesse? most progressive, progressive this show along with the Jimmy Dore show. Uh, and so, uh, first thing I'd like to say is, I love Jimmy Dore. Uh, and I always have, and I hope that I always will. And and so it, it's. Um, if you love someone, he doesn't go away. And we had uh, wonderful, For wonderful me. moments on the air with Jimmy uh, throughout uh, a great number of years here at the Young Turks. That is what I'd call a love fest. That is what I'd call uh, people who have deep admiration and respect for each other. Kyle would have been happy if none of the fucking things that Jimmy exposed about, well, he didn't expose it, but the th that he started saying about TYT, Kyle would be happy if they never came out and just, dude, everybody just got along and, you know, Jimmy will fight against the war and these guys will sell it over here. But then Jimmy will use them and say, like, I'm the only guy fucking talking about it and he'll miss out on all these other people saying things that are legitimate journalists or commentators. Interesting. I'm not talking about myself there. <laughs> Other people. Here we go. Um, that wasn't that long ago. What's up, Grey Walker? That wasn't that long ago. So since then, I don't want to paint an overly rosy picture. Of course there have been disagreements. There have been deep disagreements about Syria and Russia and force the vote and other things. 
But at that time, um, you know, we were sort of at the at the peak of Russiagate. And I know, because I know all these people personally, that the Russiagate thing bothered Jimmy just as much off air as it did on air. He felt like it sort of ruined friendships and um, he couldn't believe that there were people who were falling for that bullshit. Um, and so the more TYT would cover it, the more angry he would get. And then what would happen is Jimmy would go on air and do his show and he would never like directly or overtly call out the Young Turks at that time. But there would be like little pot shots here and there about how, you know, oh, other lefty shows are not, you know, oh yeah, telling you the truth about this Russiagate thing. For sure that happened. For sure. Which is like, once again, like, either say it or don't, say it, you know. <laughs> if say it or don't say it. It is what it is. It's, you're going to look silly to me. But, uh, shit, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, part, like, once again, I'm sorry. If you're a fan of Jimmy or Kyle or TYT or any, any of them, if you're a fan of any of them, or you like, you like their content or whatever the fuck, like, I'm sorry, I'm here to smush all of them. You know, not, I can't actually do that, right? I'm too small of a channel, but I'm just going to talk my shit, right? Uh, so, yeah, I'm curious if Jimmy, because this seems, to me, it seems a little more evident as time goes by. I could be wrong, but it seems that way. It seems like when Jimmy feels like he got something right, maybe even, like, in his mind, like, I got it right before other people did. He seems like he goes right to town, like he, he says it and he goes with 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 it. And all of the intention might not be righteous. It could be, in a way, narcissistic, like to make himself look good. Not saying he wants to do that for money, but just for maybe just for praise. If I had to guess, it leans more towards praise. That's just my honest opinion. And that doesn't discount that. I, I definitely think Jimmy means well. I think Jimmy's trying to make the world a better place. I think he can, but I do think he can get caught up in this narcissistic fucking trap in his own mind. I truly think that'll happen. That happens. I'm the guy. I, I got it right. I got it right. Come on. I think that happens sometimes. With, with a, it seems more and more apparent as the more I see from Jimmy Dore. But, Let's continue. And so that went on for a long time. I think at some point, eventually, somebody at TYT caught wind of the fact that Jimmy was taking shots at them. And, um, you know, that led Anna to go on Twitter and basically say something along the lines of, I think Jimmy's a grifter, and I don't think he's an honest actor. Um, I don't agree with Anna on that. She said that. It was fucked up. But as soon as I read that tweet, I said, uh-oh, here we go. This shit is about to get nuclear because Jimmy Dore has one gear and that gear is nuclear. And I was exactly right. So Jimmy... Except with Howie Hawkins, Tulsi Gabbard, Ro Khanna, Cenk Uger. When Cenk Uger was there in person, they were still friends. He didn't have nuclear then. Just being real with you. He had... Oh. You sure you don't, you know? Well, come on. What about Russiagate? Come on. Same thing with Tim Pool, I think. Oh, come on, you know, Medicare for all, it's better, man. And you just spouted bullshit right in front of me, and I let it go, you know? It is, what it is. Oh, Howie, had, yeah, remember the Syrian war? Let's not talk about that. You just, you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Huh. I'm sorry, Jimmy fans, that happened. Let's continue. He sort of went nuclear a little bit there. Now... It didn't really get, like, irreparable. I don't believe Kyle bought Russiagate, Dubster. That's when it became irreparable. Now, to this point, on the substance, um, I'm with Jimmy so far. So when it comes to Syria, when it comes to Russia, when it comes to Russia Gate, when it comes to force the vote, none of this is a secret. You guys have seen all my fucking segments. You know where I fall on those policy issues. It's the most obvious thing in the world. Um... But now we get to this new round where the war has ramped up, and it really is a war now. So this recent round all started with uh, this video from the Young Turks talking about Aaron Mate in their postgame. 
They said uh, Aaron Mate yelled at me. And so oh, Aaron Mate oh, lied. Oh, 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 Aaron Mate. Oh, everyone cares what Aaron loud, Mate Kyle has God. to say, oh, right? Bro. The guy who denies that Syrian children were killed with chemical attacks. Yeah, yeah. And fuck Aaron Mate. By the, yeah, fuck get, you. Anyway, let's move on. Russians. Let's end the freaking pot. I can't. I can't. Okay, see, that's what I'm. I can't stand. I can't stand that guy, and I can't stand the very intentional disinformation they put out there in regard to disgusting dictators around the world. The very people they seem to be working for, to be quite honest with you. Let's move on. All right, we're done. Disgusting. Uh, Absolutely disgusting. Which honest friends ever say some shit like that? (laughs) Hmm. Kyle will tell you. They're good people, just they fucked up there. So let's state the obvious. Uh, That was gross. That was a a smear. It's so absurd that the first time I watched it, I literally laughed out loud. You called it a smear? Oh, shit. Those are your friends. What do you do when your friend does something like... Because smear means like do something creepy, right? You shit on someone's name, like in this type of kind, like you work for a foreign government type shit, like one of those type of smears. And, you know, Kyle would have just sat back and watched it happen. Jeez, thank God Jimmy liked some random tweet. Otherwise, Kyle would still be in his fucking cage. Holy shit. We call these, we call this friends nowadays. This is amazing. Here we go. Like, even if it was friends, you like, it was really like a close friend of mine. I'd go out, of my way, go out of my way to be like, yo, I think you're fucking up, dude. And here's how I think you're fucking up. Oh, guess what? If someone asks me about it, I'm going to tell them what the fuck is, what I really feel about it. Because I like being honest with people. I'm not going to protect you. But he's the hero of the left. Leave Kyle alone. Here we go. I laughed out loud. Um, Jenk was just mad that Aaron like responded to one of his tweets on Israel and Palestine, where Jenk said something about sky gods, and uh, Aaron dunked on him. But everybody dunked on Jenk for that tweet. Hassan Piker, his nephew, dunked on him for that tweet. Jenk took it personally that Aaron went after him on that tweet, and so I think that's what led to this segment or this portion of the post game. But, yeah, there's no excuse for this. This is ridiculous. Of course, Aaron Mate is not paid by dictators or paid by the Russians. He's a great journalist who's done a lot of great work. Um, So what do I think of that? Of course, I think of that the exact same thing that all of you fucking knew I thought of it, which is, like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. And also, let me say, I get McCarthy smeared all the time. Anybody who took the position that I took on Russiagate gets McCarthy smeared all the time. I literally debated Jank on the issue of Russiagate. One of the many reasons I stopped reading my Twitter mentions is because I would get McCarthy smeared. So, Did your friend Jank McCarthy smear you? Like, say you work for Russia? Where, like, what does that have to do with you being friends with this guy and then letting that go? McCarthyite smear? Ah, like your friends are not supposed to do that, right? Like if you're a good friend, you tell them about it. Like, hey, don't do that anymore. (laughs) But all right. If you talk about this topic, you're going to get McCarthyite smeared. It's no big deal. It happens to me all the time. That's what happened when I spoke up and blah, blah, blah. But what happens when it comes from a person that Kyle is considering a good person? Now what? This is very weird so far. Let's keep going. So, listen. What's up, Alex? Aaron is upset that Crystal Ball and I haven't commented on this until now. And, listen, again, for the record, I... He's a victim in this. He didn't do anything wrong. He's minding his business. He's a lovely dude. And then he gets this from TYT. It is... It's super fucked up. In my defense and in Crystal's defense, the reason why we didn't say anything about this is because... We thought it's fucking obvious, of course. (laughs) Of course they look ridiculous in this. And I don't think they're convincing many people, bringing many people to their side with stuff like that. Yeah, you know, when 9-11, everybody saw they were all, you know, Saudi Arabia and the fucking, you know, people who did it. But, you know, we started invading Iraq and shit. I thought it was so obvious I didn't need to say anything about it. (laughs) 
Come on, bro. This is not some like. <laughs> I heard Aaron sniffs his own mom's underwear. It's not like some shit like that. No, we're talking about fucking foreign policy to where they've been drumming up some type of war or cold war with Russia and China. We've been in actual war with fucking Syria. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like direct weapons, like blowing people up type shit in the Middle East for dumb long. And obviously proxy wars with all these other fucking countries. That's some real shit. That's not a make fun of you like uh, rumor. <laughs> that's what that's why that's what he's making it sound like. Here's more. Right? Wouldn't you agree? And then also, listen, I, when I got into my, you know, scandal about my old tweets when Mike Cernovich dug them up and wrote an article calling me a sexist and a racist and all the negative things uh, in the book, nobody defended me. And listen, I'm totally fine with that. It, you know, I, I never held a grudge over it. I never thought, like, how dare, you know, all my friends in lefty circles not come out of the woodworks and, you know, put their neck on the line for me. I just thought... Listen, this is par for the course. I don't expect everybody to come. I'm not entitled to other people going out there and responding for me. I just thought, hey, it is what it is. This isn't high school. We don't have clicks. People could think whatever they want to think, and I'll handle it on my own. And it Do you see how that was like culture war drama, and that's foreign policy? We see that, right? One's like culture war drama shit, right? Look how hypocritical these leftists are. Look what he said. And he made like, made like a... I don't know, he retweeted a Chappelle joke, which has some racial shit in it. I don't know what he actually did, but... See the difference between that and, like, foreign policy, where potentially, like, legitimately, potentially, like, millions of people can die? In fact, it's already happening, as far as, like, actions in the world that governments take in order to, in order for defense, like, leads to millions of people dying. I think there's a difference. There. For me, it feels like there's a difference. You guys tell me, though. Here we go. It was the exact same thing with Crystal when it came to that article that Nathan J. Robinson wrote not that long ago, where she basically, where he basically argued that she's emboldening Nazism because she does a show with Sagar, who's populist right, and populist right is like what the Nazis were, so therefore... You're being, like, too soft on the right and too soft on Tucker Carlson, and you're basically, like, emboldening Nazis and stuff. It was a silly article. I don't think Nathan's arguments were very good, but, you know, Crystal fucking hated that shit. She read it, and she's like, fuck this shit, and nobody defended her. So, you know, I don't think she cares. She was upset by the article, but she's not mad at other lefties for not, like, immediately coming out there and responding because... It is what it is. It's not that big a deal. We all go through this shit online. People always say shit about us, and we could all have our positions on it, but it's not like, you know, we're the Justice League rushing to everybody's defense at every moment. I watch this stuff unfold like everybody else watches it unfold, and sometimes I just look at it, and I'm like, well, that's dumb, and I move along, and I don't, you know, do a whole monologue or whatever over it. So anyway, listen, I'm not trying to make it... <laughs> oh my god, bro. It's so... Ah, for me, that's fucking weak, bro. Like, that just logically. I, I, well, I guess it, the, he talks very calm and makes himself sound rational. Maybe he believes he's being rational with this, but... Fuck, that's weird. All right? ...an excuse. Um, what happened to Aaron was wrong. And, but I think that's so obvious that I'm like, really? You need me to say it? Like, you don't know what my position already is on Russiagate? You don't know what the things I've said on Russia? You don't know the things I've said on Syria? Like, I'm fucking 100% in alignment with Aaron on all those things. What I... People saw the action as corrupt, as in State Department talking points, to smear a guy who's trying to expose some sort of truth about whatever the fuck. That's how people saw it. People, a lot of people... Trust me, Kyle, a lot of people look at you. How dare you? <laughs> a lot of people look at you and they're like, oh, Kyle stands for the right thing. Doesn't matter what, like, what the fuck's going on. He'll stand up for righteousness. They may not call it that. They may say it's, he stands up for good policy or he stands up for taking down bad policy or taking down bad people or whatever. They look at him as that. So that scenario, 
It's not a rumor. <laughs> John called me a bitch. <laughs> You're not going to defend me? No, it's more of... <laughs> they said I work for Russia, and the U.S. has been secretly and quietly nudging towards some sort of either Cold War or maybe even a hot war with fucking Russia through proxy wars and their sanctions and all the little bullshit things. The, the meddling in our election excuse. Seems like they've been building that shit up. Same thing goes with China. <laughs> like, that's a little different, right? Or maybe it's not. Not for Kyle, apparently. Apparently that's just some sort of rumor, drama rumor. Here we go. Agree with him on all that and then turn around and be like, you know, I think TYT's right, and he's paid by fucking Russian dictators. I mean, honestly, it's it's absurd. So, after that happened, Jimmy and Aaron responded. Oh, makes perfect sense. They responded a number of times. Makes perfect sense. Aaron has gone on a number of outlets to respond. He wants to sort of clear his name. I don't blame him for that as all at all. It's the new template for the Jimmy Dore show, is, is TYT. <laughs> and they'll still go after, I guess, Rachel Maddow and... Uh, Joy Reid every so often, but, you know, the main one is taking TYT down for some reason. Because they insulted him. You can't insult Jimmy, get away with it. You're going down. It's a little bit unfair painting, but, you know, it, there's hints of that there. Let's be real. Here we go. Um, The Young Turks then doubled down and brought on some idiot who parroted the State Department line on Syria. It was really sad to watch. <laughs> it was like, what are you doing? Don't double down on this. You're so wrong. It's, you're not even... Wait, they doubled down on it? I mean, they went out of their way to find a journalist, journalist who will repeat those State Department talking points. And you're saying, that's just, that's just, fr that's just how they're, they're just going to get back at Jimmy. That's all it is. They're just trying to get back at Jimmy. By, you know, saying rape is okay. Or, hey, war's okay. Or, hey, this war is justified. <laughs> Come on, bro. There's no way you, you giggle at that. Like, huh, this is just some friendly, or uh, this is just some, you know, mean girl tactic to uh, take Jimmy Dore down <laughs> by uh, selling war with Assyria. <laughs> Come on, Kyle. I know, you, I know it's hard for you, bro. Pause. I know it's hard for you, but a little bit. Just a little bit. Say something. Just a little. There we go. Even close to right. It was just sad to watch. Um, but then there was another escalation. And the escalation oh, it's recording. It happened. is recording, Anthony. And I'll tell you this story. The story about uh, uh, that was followed by an apology card you wrote me for degrading harassment. Uh, Anna Kasparian Why is it recording so used loud, to dress bro? when I worked there uh, uh, unbelievably up. inappropriately for a newsroom. <laughs> she looked like she was going to a rave. The skirt, one time she came into the newsroom with a skirt so short. It wasn't a pencil skirt. It was like a fluffy one, too, but so short that she bent over in front of me, and I literally saw her ass and her thong. She's wearing a thong. I literally saw it. And everybody saw it. And I go, hey, Anna, nice news skirt. <laughs> and everybody laughed. Like, they laughed louder than I thought they would. And so it humiliated her. She got humiliated in the middle of the newsroom. And I did it. And I felt bad. I, I, at that time, we were friendly. And I was just busting her balls, right, for, for dressing like that in the newsroom. <laughs> You're going to bend over and show me your ass? I think that's a little... I'm not offended, but I think that's a little risque. Um, imagine if I did that, if I walked around and showed don't, my don't, ass. Don't do that. Everybody. Don't do that, Jim. So uh, when she did, so when I did that, so she got really mad. She got, you know, she got uh, humiliated. Her face turned red. She tried to insult me back, and it just fell flat. And she looked, you know, bad. And I felt bad for her. I didn't fight. I didn't want to make her feel that. But I just wanted to make a little joke. And um, we've seen this before. All I said was, "Hey, Anna, nice new skirt," and everybody in the newsroom, because everybody saw how inappropriate she dresses. She used to dress. And everybody saw it. And uh, so that's why it got such a huge laugh and she was so humiliated. So I felt bad for her. So the next day I wrote her a card saying, hey, I'm sorry, I won't do that again. 
That was inappropriate. You don't have to worry about that happening again. I won't comment on your clothes anymore. I should have said no matter how fucking ridiculous. <laughs> you mean you'll stop commenting on her thong? On her thong <laughs> that I could see. So uh, let's bring in Max. Now, um, Max, where, where would you like to take the conversation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't uh, really where I thought the conversation was going to go. I don't have the same history with these people. So uh -huh. I uh, have no problem with Anna Kasparian's style of dress. I, I, uh, Let's talk to them. We, we don't have a dress code at the gray zone. People can show up however they want. Um, My reaction as I was listening to that live, and by the way, I was with Crystal when it happened, we started cringing more and more the more Jimmy talked. And ultimately, my reaction was exactly like Max Blumenthal's. Uh, my reaction was also cringy, but I didn't think it would blow up the way it did. I was like, ooh, he's going to eat shit for that. I didn't think it'd blow up the way it did. Uh, clearly... Once again, like I look at Jim, I'm like, a lot of me smells narcissism. Doesn't mean he doesn't mean well. It just means I smelled the narcissism there. And it seemed like self self preservation. Whether it's conscious or subconscious, he's still doing it, it seems like. So he's like, look what she's wearing. Look what she's wearing. Right? And then the, uh, essentially, it's not even an, an apology tour, but he's going on all these random channels all of a sudden. Like, explaining like bringing that up right and then that uh, a, a whole bunch of shit i guess something they can't say but uh all right here's more kyle so we've seen this incident we've seen the the video right you've heard my take like oh be honorable about it instead of trying to protect yourself like come on look what she was wearing everybody left come on for me that's not what i would do if I was trying to be the good guy in this scenario. But it is what it is. All right, so here's Kyle's take. In that moment, we are all Max Blumenthal. And understand something, guys. My issue is actually not with the original incident that Jimmy's talking about there. Now, to be fair, Jimmy says, hey, it was a bad joke. Anna says, it wasn't a bad joke. It was Jimmy commenting on me in a sexual way in front of my students, her students were in the room at the time. Um, now, I wasn't there. I'll never know exactly what happened. I don't think Jimmy's a sex pest. I don't... Th I think it's a bad joke, too. Or he went for the joke. But also probably went to, like, you know, say it loud enough and embarrass her in front of the room. Everybody laughed. I don't think he's a criminal. I don't think this is a hashtag me too thing. But my issue with the thing we just saw is what he just said right there. Oh, she dresses inappropriate. Inappropriate? Who the fuck are you to determine what is and isn't appropriate for her? Are you a fundamentalist Christian? I mean, that's like some hardcore Republican thing to say. And if I'm being objective about this, even though Jimmy's my friend, if somebody spoke about my mom or my sister or my girlfriend like that, it would take every fiber of my being to not want to beat the shit out of them because that was that's humiliating and he admits that it was a humiliating thing in the segment to me that's the realest shit you're gonna hear from kyle if i, can, if I remember correctly that's the realest shit you're gonna hear from kyle in this video They're like that was my girl or my wife or my mom my sister someone like that someone close to me i probably want to beat the shit out of you for saying that and I get that, even though I'm still reading it as like him just saying a joke and to get the room to laugh and to maybe a little bit, you know, embarrass Anna. Even though I'm saying that, it's still like, that would be infuriating for, you know, a guy like Kyle who waits for something personal to happen before he moves acts on it. <laughs> Sorry to turn it back into that. It is what it is, though. Right? Even if you're my friend, if you say something like that, I'm going to be upset with you. Huh. Even if you're my friend and you say something like, you know, you sell a war with Syria, Libya, Russia, I'm still going to be pissed at you. How come it doesn't apply there, Kyle? That's weird. 
That's pretty weird. Maybe those wars aren't personal enough for you. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kyle, Jimmy, TYT fans. I'm sorry. I'm here to roast both, all these motherfuckers at the same time. Here we go. But only halfway it doesn't through. occur to you that maybe bringing this up again is going to be a long it, video about it is like going to humiliate her yet again. That doesn't occur to you. So listen, I just look at that and I think that's kind of gross. Okay. And so my initial reaction was, and I still feel it to this day is, whoa, okay, I want nothing to do with any of this. So like to that point, sure, at any point I could have jumped in and regulated and been like, all right, come on, guys. Uh, Jimmy and Aaron uh, are right like about that X, move, Y, and Z. Uh, the Young Turks, you're wrong about I don't most of no the drama. policy stuff here. Let's be serious. But I could have stepped in at any point there before that and been like, here are my thoughts on the whole thing. And everybody would have been like, okay, it's fine. Once this happened, I was like, oh, shit. I don't want to go anywhere near this. I don't want to touch this with a 10-foot pole, dog. Hold on. You said, even if you're my friend... If you did that to someone close to me that you're also calling a friend, I would want to beat the shit out of him. You at least say something, right? Hopefully you said something behind closed doors to any of these guys. Like, hey, just try not to sell any more wars, Cenk. Uh, Anna, try not to blackmail anyone. Jimmy, you're a fucking idiot. Stop trying to lawyer up. Be real with people. And also stop bragging like you're the only one that does anything around here. Hopefully you did that behind closed doors. Now the, I'm sorry, but the the war crimes one, even the Jimmy Mealy mouthing around, it's hard for not hard not to make those like public. I'd tell them I'm doing it first if I were their friends because these things affect other people, bro. Jimmy has a lot of fans that will follow him to the fucking end of the earth, and when he tells a story like that, it's like. People are already buying that shit. And then, obviously, selling wars. Who's that good for? <laughs> TYT has, like, way less fans, I would say, by the way. But, you know, they still have a platform. They can get these people to buy into a Cold War with Russia. All right, let's continue. In fact, and you give them legitimacy by not saying anything. I think you're lying... Duh. If you don't think that's understandable, of course that's understandable. What a we. I get it. Unless you're going to stand it and say, I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing what's rational. If you do that, like you're doing right now, or if you say that at any point about any topic, I'm trying to be the rational, good, I'm trying to do what's good, right? And these guys over here are bad. As soon as you do that, that goes for, that's universal now. That means if you're if you are known for being an activist, an anti-war activist, but you beat your wife over here, like I'm sorry, the beat your wife thing, like you're telling me that shouldn't be called out. Like no, no, that's not a part of this. The rest of this, of course it is, of course it is. So when Kyle claims to be trying to do some good against something that's bad, that applies everywhere. You don't take breaks off from that. That could be a reason why he keeps putting this in, a, in terms of policy. I only talk when, when it's policy, you know. What? The only reason you talk policy is if it's good or bad. Don't lie to me. The freak, bro? I know. What's your point, then? But, all right. Here's more. Weird position I'm in as friends with all of them, and then this is unfolding in front of me. So, Crystal and I were planning... <laughs> To have hey. Jimmy on Crystal Kyle and Friends one day. Oh. We were planning to have Jank on Crystal Kyle and Friends one day. And then as we watched this, we decided, you know what? We don't want to have either right, one of them on right I'm now. I'm doing a recorded video. Because <laughs> then we would be responsible doing a for getting video. in the middle of this absolute mess. And we up, would have to ask to be rational, really rational. uncomfortable questions that are really personal in nature. And... I don't want to have anything to do with some personal shit. Nothing at all. Even if it's alleged sex sexual harassment or alleged uh, manufacturing consent for wars, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Come on. Eh. That's the new thing I'm doing from now on. It's the Kyle. Uh oh. All right, here we go. 
all. I care about policy. I don't care about personal shit. I don't want to be involved in this sort of stuff. So, you know. I, I'm sorry. I have to pause it again. Forgive me. But, all right. If someone's selling war, is that a policy thing? Like, we just have a, a policy disagreement. Or is that like a crime against your idea of humanity? Right? Right? So I don't... I already said all this already. Let's keep playing. Well, people might disagree with us on that. People might like the fact that it's, you know, you'll get a lot of clicks out of it. We ended up in Iraq by mistake. We stayed in Iraq by mistake. Just like we went and went to Afghanistan and stayed there by my mistake. Uh, Obama mistakenly just kept Guantanamo Bay open. Uh, Trump, by mistake, hired Gina Haspel and John Bolton and Elliot Abrams and Mike Pompeo. Fuck. Bernie mistakenly called Joe Biden his friend. Mistakenly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god here we go and um it's like some reality star fighting but there stuff. was there's friends so they're mistakes but if rachel maddow I or it, i don't want anything tucker to do carlson or so any of these fucking people saying, do okay, it okay, well then why guess are you what talking about it now they're the new well, enemies that kyle the will point to about it now is i was pat robertson did any of this I think Jimmy's upset that I'm not crusading. He'd be in living there, bro. Like, I'm moving to next door, Pat. 100% on every aspect of this, policy-wise and personal-wise. So you better uh, mow your lawn. Some keep this property value up. Stuff today. On moving Twitter in. That caught my eye. The first Hush. thing, as you can see here, is um, he liked this tweet. Somebody tweeted at Crystal and me and said, "Seriously though, you're ignoring the story, the serious story, completely to avoid drama." Weak. Now, yeah, yeah, it's weak, Kyle. When someone's doing something that that you would perceivably call corrupt, if anyone else fucking did it, or you know, if you, the punching up guys did it, like I said, the mainstream media, if they did it, you'd be like, "Hi, these fucking idiots." Huh. I, I I just keep repeating it over and over again. But yeah, it is weak, Kyle. Now, of course, I responded to this with a bunch of question marks because. The idea that I ignored the Syria thing is factually wrong. I covered it literally on my last show, and it was the very first video. You want to know why? Because I never, ever, ever, the Let's very go back first for a second. video. Seriously, though, you're ignoring the Syria story completely to avoid drama? Weak. I think what he's saying, I think what the person was tweeting is saying that Hey, Kyle, you're like, you're avoiding the Syria aspect in regards to TYT for the sake of avoiding drama with them. Right? Which would be what? Weak. Because why? That's selling war. Point blank period. That's selling war. But, you know, I think lawyers, or lawyers, <laughs> I think Kyle's going to do the lawyer thing. Maybe a lawyer, fuck it. But Kyle's going to do the lawyer thing to where he protects himself. I'm like, see, look, I covered it here. See? <laughs> here we go. I covered it literally on my last show, and it was the very first video. You want to know why? Because I never... And you're ever, talking about the OPCW ever, report. Ever blah, 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 shy blah, blah, away blah. from anything policy-wise. The policy shit is my job. It's my job to come out here, give you news, give you facts, give you information, and give you my opinion. And so that's what I do. What is not my job... He did a full video go talking about moral, like morality, talking about good and bad and shit like that. And <laughs> and it's like, how are those things applied? How are they applied? If I support the Syrian war, does that make me bad? Does it make me mistaken? That I, I, I don't get it, man. I, I really don't get it. He doesn't. He doesn't see like what they are doing with that is like creepy at all, <laughs> unless he's bullshitting in order to please his friends. I don't want to lose any friendships over this. <laughs> Here we go. 
is some weird interpersonal beef regulation, which now, unfortunately, I've been dragged into. But again, I want nothing to do with that. I'm going to reiterate that a thousand times throughout this segment. So, listen, the tweet that he liked says, you're going to ignore the serious story, and I quote, completely to avoid drama. No, I'm avoiding the drama to avoid the drama. I'm diving headfirst into the serious shit because that's my fucking job. And of course I'm going to dive headfirst into it. So I see that. I'm like, what the, like, what are you doing, Jimmy? What are you doing? I think the guy means, once again, that if it was Rachel Maddow or Chris Hayes or Chris Matthews, fuck it. I know he's like retired or something. Like, oh, you'd be fucking crying about it. Look at them sell war like this. But it's TYT, your friends, thus you keep your fucking mouth shut, which makes you weak. And that face says it all. Here we go. This you is like know. a fucking, I'm like a record player right now, just repeating this shit over and over again because he's, he's saying that same shit over and over again. Just avoiding drama, man. It's like, eh, it's a little bit more than that, right? Here we go. I'm going to talk about the serious shit, and I did talk about the serious, serious shit, so why are you liking a tweet that says, I didn't talk about the serious shit? Um, and then we got this response from him. So he says, I don't see him going up from this. And he's pulling somebody else who said this, but this is the sentiment he agrees with. I think they are talking about the OPCW cover up and the slanderous conduct of your friends, Jenk and Anna, in trying to destroy the reputation of Aaron Mate. But you can keep pretending those pretending that doesn't matter, I guess. OK, so we already talked about the Aaron Mate thing. The other thing they're talking about here is the OPCW report. They're claiming I never said anything about it. Really? This is from my. Is that what that said? I think, once again, they're tying the OPCW report to TYT, who's lying about it. And you're not saying anything about TYT lying about this, which is exposing war crimes. You're all about the policy, dude, right? Well, what if your friends are selling the opposite narrative that you're trying to, like, you know, that you're trying to maintain. Like, hey, this war's bad. They're lying to us about it. Blah, 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 blah. Yet I'm going to sit on the same fucking network as the people who are saying, no, no, this war is justified because this guy did chemical attacks that are, even though they're proven wrong, we're not going to tell you they're proven wrong. We're going to bring in the State, state Department shill to come in and report on it as a journalist and tell us, no, he did do the chemical weapons thingy because the thingies, did you see the New York Times thingy where they did the, the the re the computerized reenactment of it in the thingy and the thingy and there look see see that bed bomb in it see bad they did it Assad did it <laughs> like see how that comes off as like you're protecting them by not saying anything about it hey maybe you don't watch the show I guess it would make you a shitty friend or something I don't know here we go talking about here is the OPCW report. They're claiming I never said anything about it. Really? This is from my very last live stream. So we're the rebels in Syria doing so we hey, are the I rebels did. in Syria I'm safe, doing right? chemical attacks on the people. So we are He's just protecting himself through this whole thing. It's still not working. Saying, were, was it the rebels that did the chemical attacks on the people in Syria? You guys had to, you know, follow this stuff. The the OPCW um, whistleblower. I don't know if you guys remember this, but this just came out not that long ago. It turns out that all the claims from the Western governments were total bullshit, and they had no evidence for it. So yes, the claims of the chemical attacks against the, you know the civilians in in Syria done by the Assad government that turns out to be total bullshit. And it's not me saying it; it's whistleblowers who were at the UN who were like, "That's not true at all." This was a big story, but it was kind of hidden. It was only like Aaron Mate and a handful of other people who really blew the whistle on it. So, uh, WikiLeaks. Anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, once again, Jank and Anna and Tyt, they all they were just they just kept making mistakes over and over again. Even now, before they had the feud with Jimmy, Jimmy was talking about that, I believe. Yes, he was talking about that. And other people, like WikiLeaks. So, it's like, oh, so friends have friends who have better information, but the, the TYT friends aren't buying the Jimmy Dore friends and what they're saying. Kyle says his own piece, but doesn't realize that there's this whole dichotomy going here. Like, hey, wait a minute, these guys have two completely different narratives. 
and I won't address it because it'll be drama if I correct one side over the other. Okay, let's say that this one side did get corrected over and over and over again. But they're going to sell it anyways. Why the fuck is that? Oh, it's because they don't like Jimmy Dore, so they'll, they're willing to risk war crimes for the sake of destroying Jimmy Dore. What the freak? You tell me which world of, which world of righteous-minded people where that's logical, ever. Even the idea of just sitting back and saying nothing. Because I don't like the drama thing. Like if they're friends and they're in this drama thing, you should be trying to help out or mediate. The freak. They don't suck at being a friend, too. Suck at politics, not being a friend, Kyle. Come on, Kyle. Kyle! Nah, he gets no South Park shit. Fuck that. Here we go. Oh, and listen. Gonna toot my own horn here a little bit, but yeah, I called that one from the beginning. Oh, they it weren't very mistakes, Grey Walker? Assault, has Shit. Weapons of mass destruction, and it just, it, it was not true. And in the case of Assad, I don't know if you guys remember this. Remember when Assad gave up all of his chemical weapons? Remember that? There was a moment where it was like John Kerry and some Russian counterpart doing a press conference, and they basically said, is there anything that Syria could do to make you not, like, attack or invade? And um, basically... Kerry said something like, yeah, give up all your chemical weapons, but that's not going to happen. And then the very next day, or within the next week, Assad was like, here, take all my chemical weapons. And they did. They came and they took all the chemical weapons. And so it's funny <laughs> that, like, everybody forgets that part. But then they go on to say, well, obviously he was attacking civilians um, with gas. So in other words, at a time when he was, he already basically won the war. He was going to attack his own civilians with gas, which would bring the West right back into it. It's nonsense. And it turns out we learned it was total nonsense. Now that Add, add the phrase, and these other YouTube channels, they won't cover it. Add that phrase, and it's just Jimmy Dore before Jenk pissed him off. <laughs> it's literally Jimmy Dore before Jenk pissed him off. Now Jenk says TYT out loud before he kept it. <laughs> he didn't even point out one of the most crucial things about Howie Hawkins. He let it go as a secret. It's like an open secret. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, Jimmy, I know what you're talking about. All right, then, let's move on. What? <laughs> it's unreal. It's unreal, bro. Who let these guys be the thought leaders? This is weird. That's weird, man. Maybe because they got here first. Right? Weren't they, like, here at early YouTube? Okay. Or maybe they supported the right person at the right time. Oh, All right, here we go. Oh, they have some skill. Oh, I can't. Jank and Anna. Kyle can make himself sound rational, even though he's saying absolute nonsense. <laughs> go watch Kyle. Go watch Kyle's video on uh, morality, and you tell me that's not absolute nonsense. But it make he sound. It sounds rational. Sounds rational. Don't blame me. <laughs> and Jimmy obviously has charisma and Patty did stand up and all. He has he has character like a you know a persona that people want to pay attention to. He's got he's got the fire and all that shit. Yeah, it's different than information. But I'm saying like like why are they, like people appeal to him? I'm like they're not really saying much to me. I mean, ah, there was a time where, where it felt like they were, but yeah, there was like a clear bad thing happening that they can all unite against. But now it's like, fuck, what if we're the bad guys? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. The left is disparaging. It's breaking apart. <laughs> all right, here we go. That's not even the only time I brought it up. I brought it up three or four times. I've done literally over a hundred segments on Uncle Syria. Drew's nasty treehouse. Now, granted, what? most of those, I mean, almost all of them are about. I don't want to know Civil what War, goes on in but, there. You know, since we got the OPCW whistleblower, and Aaron did that great work, almost almost every segment on Syria, I've brought up that fact. So, good job for saying Aaron Mate's name while talking about something more important, which is the Syria thing itself, right? 
I mean, I don't know what you want me to tell you. I'm doing policy shit exactly right, yet I'm still somehow getting these weird passive-aggressive criticisms. Um, so here's the bottom line, guys. It's about you not calling out criticism, or not, not calling out uh, what you would normally call corruption if it was someone else. You're not calling it out. So they called you out for not calling it out. And guess what? People called Jimmy out for not calling certain things out about TYT. Obviously, he got a pass, and then Jank insulted him. You know, not, not before Jank ran for office and all that shit. And Jimmy, you know, platformed him and campaigned for him and shit. Not before that. Because they're friends. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody needs to stop dragging me into some bullshit. This has absolutely nothing to do with me. Um, if they want to keep duking it out... They're your friends. Of course it does. Yeah, I know. Once again, if this was Rachel Maddow versus Jimmy Dore, you'd be jumping out of your fucking seat. How do I get in here? Let me in the fight. But what you're doing is essentially cowardly, I would say. You got to call out, like, at the very least, bad ideas happening. Even if you don't think it's corruption, you, you got to at least think the ideas are bad from all these directions. Right? TYT and their creepy policy. Jimmy Dore and his creepy lawyer talk. Right? It seems like that would be something I want to call out regardless. But, uh, you know, not... Maybe he's not built for this. As keep playing. They can keep duking it out. Um, I don't buy this notion that. Well, yeah. What if what if Jank would have won that shit though? Is talking like, about policy nonsense? Because if that was the case, well, guess what? I've done 103 segments on Syria, 82 on Russia, 16 on Russia Gate. I debated Jank on Russia Gate. I did 217 segments on Medicare for All, and maybe about a dozen. Referencing directly I'm or the indirectly guy. Right, right. forced the vote, I'm, and I was a supporter of. I'm the guy. Look, I list of all that on my website. <laughs> Look. Oh, you're talking about the time when, when Ben Shapiro, said it was okay to just kill innocent people, right? No, you got you got to value your soldiers more than just, more than those innocent people over there. It's okay, you know, civilian casualties. Yeah, it happens. And then, uh. Then Ben, then Big Ben, yes, as he got older, Big Ben, he had to, uh, clearly, he wrote some whatever, like, uh, this is why I'm wrong about this statement on a website somewhere back there, nobody hears about it or anything, he doesn't really bring it up ever, you know, just something that's out there, right? So every time that someone, like, hey, didn't you say this, Ben Shapiro, this horrible fucking thing, like, this really, like, like, are you, like, psycho saying this shit? I don't think he has, actually, but. It's kind of psychopath. Like, that statement's very psychopathic sounding. So it's like, if people start questioning, you say, hey, look, refer to this over here. And it's some website where you wrote an apology 10 years earlier, <laughs> explain, like, excusing yourself, essentially, for the present. Hey, Kyle, why are you letting TYT war crimes? You know, not war crimes. But, well, you can kind of call them war crimes in a way. What do you think of, hey, Kyle, what about uh, TYT and the manu manufacturing consent for these fucking wars and war crimes? Well, over here I have 200 videos on Syria, 300 on Libya, 80 on cancel culture. Like, that is a lawyer slash car salesman, bro. What the freak? That should even bother his fans for here and that shit. Well, let, let, whatever. Let's continue. Force the vote. Not important. So everybody knows. Where I stand on all the policy stuff, yet I'm being dragged into this. And I don't want to be dragged into this because it has mm -hmm. gotten ugly and it has gotten personal. And the final point I want to make is this. Here's where everybody's wrong, okay? Is everybody's what? This. Here's where everybody's wrong, okay? Everybody's wrong. Here we go. TYT accuses Jimmy of being a grifter and a right winger. They're wrong on both of those things. It doesn't matter what you think of Jimmy personally or otherwise. I don't think Jimmy's a grifter, but he does some grifting sometimes. Let's be fucking real about it. I think he means well, but he does some grifting sometimes. 
Let's be real. In fact, you can call him ignoring TYT for all those fucking years as grifting. They're like, oh, I gotta build my platform a little bit bigger. It's gonna make it larger. Then I'll say TYT by name, right? As soon as I get enough money to get this thing off the, you know, off the ground. Maybe. But yeah, I'm sure he's done plenty of grifting. I wouldn't call him a grifter, though. He's not a grifter. He believes every word he's saying. Guaranteed. Every I know Jimmy. Hour and five. That's a fact. He believes every single word he's saying. Wonderful. Uh, the idea he's a right winger is also ludicrous. He's attacking Democrats from the left. He's attacking the left flank of the Democrats from the left. Now, you might not like that. You might think some of his attacks are unfair. You might think some of his attacks are misleading or whatever. We're not going to get into that now. I got a, a thousand criticisms and a thousand points of agreement. But he ain't a right winger mm -hmm. and he ain't a grifter. Okay. At the same time, Jimmy accuses TYT of being basically corrupt and being liars. I disagree. <laughs> you know who else used to disagree? This guy. Well, actually, I was. <laughs> oh. uh, this is going to be his proof to why TYT doesn't lie or, or is corrupt his proof is going to be Jimmy Dore meanwhile it's like aren't there people that you know work for government for all these years and say yeah yeah the company's great the government's great and all that stuff and then they become whistleblowers because of whatever it is a call to conscience maybe fear for their own life they fucking you know, steal files and try to share. Are we going to look at them and be like, well, sorry, but two years ago, you were saying how much you loved the government. Why would you believe? Why are we going to believe this, huh? Like, I have the papers right here. You said you liked them, buddy. We have it on tape. <laughs> are you serious? You better have, you, I don't know. You better have something for this after this clip. Same time, Jimmy accuses TYT of being basically corrupt and being liars. I disagree. You know who else used to disagree? <laughs> this guy. Actually, I was wondering about, about Cenk because, you know, I saw Cenk at the e-board meeting and I asked him some tough questions about how he's taking money from Jeffrey Katzenberg. Oh, you know, shoot. he got a $20 million investment to hire some journalists. And so far, I haven't seen a lot of them, you know, doing the original investigative reporting that they're supposed to be doing. I see a lot of punditry. And unfortunately, on the main show, it tends to be kind of mainstream. You know, does he think that this money that he's taken from the establishment Democratic Party would influence him? And of course, he says it hasn't. But now we see, you know, this reporting about Russia. So I know that you may not want you have to choose your words very carefully. But I don't. I don't um, I, I Someone should walk in the room and just be like, hey, Jank said, uh, fuck, forced to vote. Well, uh, hey, what? Fuck Jank. Fuck him. He's been lying the whole time. He takes Clinton money. He does this. He does that. Don't you ever make Jimmy Dore. I mean, never let forced to vote look bad again. I'm sorry, Jimmy. That's what it. Don't get mad when people start saying shit like that, bro. It's what it is. I, I I don't think that that's I don't think Jenk is uh, push, preaching a false narrative for uh, investment money. Uh, that's I think he truly believes it. You know, um, mm -hmm. I take you know Jenk is a what I call a natural Republican, right? So he was a Republican at first. He's just a you know natural Republican. Sorry, Jimmy fans. <laughs> but come on, bro. So this is around Russia Gate, and so it's clearly after 2016, or like the election cycle, or like in that little time period, right? Either there or later, right? So, uh, I guess all you had to do is insult, force a vote, insult something Jimmy like, or uh, not that Jimmy likes, but something Jimmy puts his name or face on. Yes, puts his credibility on the line. Insult that, and then Jimmy will tell the truth about you. First, for a long time, and he talks about this openly, about how he, was, he even led pro-Iraq war rallies, right? The first one. 
and um, no, and so smear. it's that's why people are drawn oh, no. to him because it's this this great journey where he went from this you know meathead uh, into this progressive right, and so that's what it to me meat. about his journey and, and uh, to, uh, about Jenk. So I think you know it's if, if he is what we consider to be wrong on an issue, it's just because he's genuinely uh, believes it. I, I, that that money that that investment money. I, 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 that's not how Jenk works. And if he's making a mistake, it's just he's making a mistake. Or, or you know, I disagree with him. I disagree with him before they were taking, they took that money. Well, the first uh, gas attack in 2013, and Barack Obama wanted to bomb Syria over that, and they believed it. And it was proven false. It was since proven false. And they believed it. 2013, and Barack Obama wanted to bomb Syria over that, and they believed it. And it was proven false. It was oh, since it's proven it's false. Casting his own people. Jimmy's 100% right there. And that wasn't that long ago. Let me break this down further. Listen, TYT Come on, took bro. investment money from a guy by the name of Buddy Romer. Buddy Romer is a former Republican politician. Now, when they took that money, did they then turn around and on the show, they started supporting Republican politicians and pushing Republican policies? No, they didn't, right? Be well, according to a lot of these... Uh People who put themselves on the left, right of the political spectrum, they would say that, yeah, they were, they are right wingers, right? <laughs> there are a lot of people would call TYT like right wingers. Just being honest, because the whole point of the deal was, hey, we're only going to make a deal if you have zero editorial control over the show. Jank would only make deals with people who would have no editorial control over the What's show. That's bad. So that's exactly what happened with Buddy Romer. He took money from a former Republican politician, and they didn't end up backing Republicans nonstop. Now, it goes deeper than that, too, though, because he took money from Katzenberg. Did that make him change his opinions? No. I got news for you guys. If you've watched TYT for a long time, you'll know this. He's always had a lot of cringe opinions. Didn't uh, George W. Bush, didn't he support Hillary Clinton over Donald Trump? And Joe Biden over Donald Trump? But isn't but George Bush is on the right. He's on the right, and so is Trump. So why would he go against his own teammate like that? Oh, because these type of people don't actually give a fuck about your left right bullshit. Holy shit. I could be making that up. They wouldn't call TYT right-wingers? Oh, wait, I just realized where the comment came from. All right, here we go. So, for example, before he took money from hey, Romer or Katzenberg, Jank always referred to himself as, and I quote, a mild interventionist. What? He has always been relatively hostile to protectionism. He says he believes more in free trade than other lefties like me and Jimmy. I don't know what Aaron's position is on on free trade and protectionism, but I know Jimmy is more in alignment with me on that. Jank was always like, I'm more of a free trader. Jank has always been sort of openly hostile to unions. There's clips back from TYT in like 2008 where he mentioned unions and he's like, yeah, I'm Lawyer not up, union. bitch. So listen, I disagree with Jank on all of that, but I disagreed with him on it before he took investment money and after he took investment money. And this is a guy who walked away from a million dollar MSNBC contract because he felt like they were going to muzzle him. So then would he turn around and take investment money for his company for them to muzzle him or force him to change his opinions? No, he wouldn't do it. Unless the point was to, like, oh, this is the new thing to go with. This will make way more money than me being some random job at MSNBC, and I get to be the boss of it. <laughs> Come on, Kyle. Like, he is selling you the premise that Jenk is a... Heartfelt, good, super duper good guy who accidentally sells war every so often. <laughs> and to that degree, to where it's like, huh? It's like, you really want this to happen, don't you? <laughs> he messed up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, again, I want to be clear about something. This isn't me saying 
you can never disagree with TYT. Of course, I have a thousand disagreements with them. Again, I literally debated Jank on Russiagate, okay? And there's a million other things I could go on and on about where I think they're wrong. Wait, wait Jank didn't walk away but from MFSMB? It's definitely not. Sorry, uh, YouTube uploaded viewers. Jank didn't walk away from MSNBC. They demoted him because his rating sucked. Ah. See, I don't even need to hear that for me to be like, it's still a bullshit excuse. Oops, I, I accidentally lied. Wait, that doesn't make That's not logical. It is culty and weird. Digging his own grave. Tear more? Well, I don't know. Because, look, he's, he's not getting ratioed that bad. So, how's a mixed bag? I think he has, like, a, he has, I think he has like a cult following because he's rational. He's a very rational guy. So, you know, people like that. It's like, what? No feeling? No meaning? I like rationality. I want the hard, cold hard facts. Unless it involves getting... Your emotions involved. Right? Like something like where your friends are doing something shitty and horrible. I don't want to do that. <sighs> I'm going to be rational. Here we go. That they're changing opinions because they got the money. They would only take money from people who left them full editorial control and wouldn't impact the direction of the show. If you dislike the direction of the show... You could dislike it on its own merits. You could dislike it because you disagree with Jenkins Ada. It doesn't have to be because of the money thing and they're, you know, nefarious, twisting their evil mustache behind closed doors like, ha, 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 I will now change direction of the show because I got the money. Listen, the only criticism I have on that front is they made a lot of bad business decisions. They made a lot of bad business decisions. I think it's gross if you take investment money. Yeah, Obama accidentally stayed in Afghanistan, stayed in Iraq. Accidentally, you know, funded rebels in Syria. Accidentally. Accidentally did that. Accidentally kept Guantanamo. You already heard the story. All the accidents these guys make. All these things that we watch, MSNBC and all these fucking channels that this guy, like, rants and raves about. The same, like, words. Like, literally with this, with the Syria thing. Literally with the Russia thing. Like, the, literally the same words, the same narrative. But for some reason, it's a mistake over here, and it's... And it's fucking corruption all day, every day over here. Because they took money in politics. But even then, when the guy takes money in politics, like, I just didn't change their content. They're still the same. Come on. <laughs> it is unbelievable, bro. That's unreal. He's not that bad. I think he's just, he just sounds like a coward right now. now well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what you're saying is what you're saying is that he knows he's bullshitting. Yeah. Oh no, 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 I don't think it's honest either. But he, I think he honestly thinks they're friends. I don't know, but I think he honestly thinks they're friends. So thus, I'll lie and bullshit on behalf of my friends. <laughs> All right, here we go. And then you also turn around and do grassroots fundraising. Don't do that. Because then the people who are giving you the grassroots money, they feel like they're the ones who are funding the whole shit, and then you're also raising investment money? I just think that's gross. I think that's a bad business decision. I think the optics of taking investment money, whether it's from Romer or Katzenberg, I think the optics are terrible. You know? Um, the optics. On that alone, I would have said don't do it. Never mind the fact that they did it and they did grassroots fundraising. But what I'll tell you is this. Jimmy believes every word he says, and TYT believes every word they say. Insert clip of him fucking screaming at Sane Progressive. Take clip of him talking about, well, get out of the way. Get the fuck out of the way. Or just some random smaller YouTuber who's like, I don't trust these guys and we should be more focused on election integrity and things like that. Because clearly Bernie Sanders failed us with this. What happened? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're good, we're good.
Uh, and yeah, it's like... Sorry. My computer's about to go really slow. All right. Uh, I got just completely lost now. Uh, so yeah, I completely forgot what I was gonna say. That fucked me up. I don't want to think about it. I just want to just hit play. I'm gonna hit play. Or I'll hit rewind first, then hit play again. You know, um. On that alone, I would have said don't do it. Never mind the fact that they did it and they did grassroots fundraising. But what I'll tell you is this. Jimmy believes every word he says and TYT <laughs> believes every word they say. And so, uh, listen, in summation, this is, this is basically this is all I have to say about this. I'm always going to... Oh, I remember now. Mike Gravel. What's your fucking point here if you're not going to try and win? Right? When he was saying, like, listen, I know they're not going to let me win, but let me try to get a message out there. Right? Like, well, if you're going to go out there and talk about fucking 9 11 and architects and engineers against 9 11 or for 9 11 truth, come on, man. You're shooting yourself in the foot. It's like you're not trying to win. <laughs> All these things that Kyle has to end, like, actually, he doesn't end up taking them back. He just continues on like the mistake didn't happen in the first place. Right? And what does he do? What happened when uh, the, the squad and the Justice Democrats that clearly fuck up, clearly, like, do shady shit? What was he saying initially when that shit was happening? I remember it. He was like, oh, uh, listen, uh, they're just a little confused and they're weak. They're not bad guys. They're, they're, not, they're not Nancy Pelosi, even though they're begging down to her at every fucking turn. They're not Nancy Pelosi. Nancy's bad. AOC, though, she's just weak, you know. Just weak. Nancy just coerced her in. That's it. That's it for AOC. She's just weak, you know. She's got to be stronger. She's not a bad person. Pelosi is. My God, Kyle. Here we go. Tell you guys yeah, exactly yeah. what yeah. I think Suck at this, bro. on policy stuff. Because that's my job. That's my job. But when it gets personal, huh? especially with people who I know <laughs> nice and am black. friends with, I want absolutely nothing to do with it. I want to be a million miles away from it. So I don't want to hear about some hashtag me too shit. I don't want to hear about some bickering. I don't want to hear about how you think somebody's a grifter and a right winger and you think somebody's corrupt and they're a liar. Basically, as long as they're calling each other grifters and right-wingers and corrupt and liars, and as long as we're having the conversation about dressing inappropriately and shit, I'm out. Not only do I not want anything to do with this, I, I don't want anything to do with them either. If someone's being called a liar and corrupt, and then they prove it to you, are you going to pay attention then? Or is that just too much drama? That's unreal. That's an unreal state. That should be your new fucking profile picture. That fucking look on your face right there. It calls, don't take me seriously. The freak, bro? You don't want to hear about corruption and people lying? Your peers? People you have access to? Unfucking real. But, I know. I'm doing that forever now. Look at my award. <laughs> I give you magic. <laughs> my God. That's like as cowardly as cowardly gets, bro. Here we go. Them. I'm done with all of them. Because I'm an adult. And I got no time for this high school type shit. Okay? And you might think it's not high school. <laughs> well, guess what I heard? <laughs> Tammy said, you're ready to go to war with Syria. Well, uh, Johnny said, you're a sexual harasser. Guys, listen, I'm Kyle, okay? No need to get into the drama stuff, okay? This is just drama. Right? War crimes, sexual harassment, 
Sexual assault. Fuck it. Throw that in there. This is not serious. I'm an adult. Now watch me scamper away. I know. Uh, here we go. Cool shit, but you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. I'm doing that because forever, if we bro. are just talking about policy again, I got dragged this. into this shit. <laughs> because supposedly, oh, no, it here. is all about policy. Is it really? Well, then, uh, you didn't think that, what are the numbers again? My... I only care about policy. Bullshit. You care about morality, you fucking know it. Plus, all that religious shit you talk about is nothing to do with policy. Fuck face. Here we go. Well, it does, but... I know. <laughs> and some people are born good, and some people are born bad. And then, and then, James... <laughs> I can't fully that preschool shit he said, bro. Oh, fuck. All right, here we go. 103 segments on Syria, my 82 segments on Russia, my 16 on Russiagate, my 217 on Medicare for All, and maybe a dozen on Force the Vote. That wasn't sufficient for you to understand where I am policy-wise in this conversation? So listen, on the, on the policy stuff... Yes, I happen to agree much, much more with Jimmy and Aaron, without a doubt. Um, on the personal stuff, at this point, I want nothing to do with any of you guys. And if you don't like that, you can fuck off. And I'm not just talking to them now. I'm what talking to fucking, people in the audience who might not agree with that, what how a I'm tough guy. this or, or what I'm doing. I don't fucking care. I don't care. I'm an introverted guy. I don't like drama. I'm being dragged into some bullshit. So what I'm doing, dipping my toe in the bullshit because I got dragged into it and I'm getting the fuck out and I'm going to be nowhere near it. Okay? And I hope, I hope I don't get dragged into it again where I have to respond again to some shit. Because I don't want to do it. I don't like to do it. But if I got to do some shit, I got to do it. And that's why I'm doing this segment right now. But hopefully this is the last thing I have to say about this. I want nothing to do with it. I want to be a thousand miles away from it. And you should respect that, but if you don't respect that, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> there's, a, there's a nerf for that fucking image. Guess what, guess what, Kyle? <laughs> guess what, Kyle? Yo, <laughs> pussa! That's a... Oh my god, is that cowardly, bro? I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> It's like, he tries to make that position sound like it's the righteous, rational thing to fucking do. Unfucking real I have no words for this guy for this shit, bro. That's one of the... It's probably the weakest I've ever heard him. Weakest sounding I've ever heard him. I don't know if fans will hear that, though. Or even the general public. They might be like, All right, Kyle, stay in neutral. Fuck. Go back to yelling at TYT or go back to yelling at Jimmy Dore. Mostly people yelling at TYT. So, this, well, this is probably acceptable in their world. Maybe. Maybe. I'd say mostly acceptable in the Jimmy Dore, TYT, Kyle Kalinske universe. Like, okay, you're just going to be neutral and you don't want the drama. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but us fans, we're going to argue about this till the end of time. And Jimmy's going to keep talking about this, and TYT's going to try to pick up whatever scraps they can <laughs> from any of this. And Jordan's going to sit back and giggle. Make videos if I feel like. Fuck it. <sighs> what a weak, that's a weak fucking take. The, the moral arguments I've heard him make are kind of like kindergarten stuff. This is different. This is like, I'm afraid to really say anything about this. <laughs> you literally said, if my friend said this, I'd want to beat the shit out of him. That's for the Jimmy and the whatever harassment thing, right? And then his friends are selling war crimes. And then you said they knowingly sold them. Like they purposely brought on a puppet. It was just going to say all the narratives that they, they want to sell to the audience. <laughs> it's like, but you know. I'm an adult. We don't talk about these things. 
<laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, that's supposed to be someone I can trust. Who's gonna, you know, he's gonna point out the crimes of the world. God damn it, Karen. <laughs> I meant to call him Kyle there. I called him Coward by accident. I said, I said, God damn it, Coward. I mean, fuck, Kyle. Nah, I don't think he's a hundred percent coward, but he's being a coward here. That's quite obvious. <sighs> All right, coward. I mean, Kyle. Uh. 